35. I feel like I've got a word from the Lord this morning. I think it's going to, well, I know it's going to of everyone here. Hallelujah. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> All of us are on a journey in life. And so many times life comes at us kind of hard, fast, and continuously. And some of the things that we experience in life are because of our own choices and of our own doings, but sometimes we get caught up in things by just being, being there in, in our own innocence. But God is always for us. He's always on our side. And he's looking out for us. So I want to look at a couple examples this morning, and I'm going to tell this in story form, and I'm almost actually going to preach this and tell this in like two scenes. Scene one, I'm, I'm, this morning I'm going to be talking about the robe and the rooster. Scene one will be the robe, and scene two will be the rooster. So just bear with me. But Genesis 37, 31 through 35, it says this, Then the brothers killed a young goat and dipped Joseph's robe into its blood. They sent the beautiful robe to their father with this message. Look what we found. Doesn't this coat or this robe belong to your son? Their father, Jacob, recognized it immediately and said, yes. He said, yes, he replied. He said, this is my son's coat. A wild animal must have eaten him, and Joseph has clearly been torn to pieces. And Then Jacob, after realizing this, tore his clothes and and dressed himself in bur uh, burlap and sackcloth. And he mourned deeply for his son for a long time, the Bible says. And his family all tried to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. He said, I will go to my grave mourning for my son. He would say, and then he would weep. Now if you'll go to chapter, or Matthew chapter 26, verse 33 through 35. Matthew 26, 33 to 35. Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter. This very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times that you even know me. 35. No, Peter insisted. Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. Now, chapter 26, verses 74 and 75. Peter swore a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know this man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Suddenly, Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times that you even know me. And Peter went away and wept bitterly. These are the two different scenes that I want to talk to you this morning. The first scene that I want to introduce to you was centered around Joseph and his coat of many colors. And we've all known the story. We've heard sermon after sermon preached about the robe and the coat of many colors. And then the second scene I want to preach to you about is it centers around Simon Peter and, and what he had to deal with with the, the denial and the rooster crowing and, and how he denied him three times. So briefly, I want to go to the story of Joseph. Joseph was the younger of his 12 brothers, and he was his father's favorite. Joseph had, uh, or Jacob had uh, Joseph later in life, and and he loved uh, Rachel, who he had her him with, and he just it was his favorite. But to show Joseph and everybody around that how much he loved Joseph, he made him a special coat, a coat of many colors. And Joseph, I, I'm sure, just because he's a Bible character, I'm sure that he had some issues with self pride and kind of rub it in your face type thing I'm, I'm dad's favorite I'm the favorite of the family I'm sure that he let every uh, the brothers knew that Joseph was very close and dear 
to their dad's heart. And I'm sure that Joseph didn't help the situation by flaunting the coat of many colors and saying that he was dad's favorite. And so Joseph has a couple dreams and now this animosity has been building between Joseph and his brothers and Joseph has a couple dreams and he has a dream and about uh, his brothers, I'm just putting it in layman's term, his brothers bowing down and, and honoring him and worshiping him and and he tells his brothers about that, and, and that's just kind of adding salt to the wound and insult to injury. And, and then, he, then he really ups the game, and he has another dream, and he says, Mom and Dad is even going to bow down to me one day. And that really, that really got to the brothers of Joseph. It's one thing you say that about us, but when you say you bring Mom and Dad into the picture, that's wrong. And so one day, uh, all the brothers were out tending uh, Jacob's sheep, and, and you got to remember, Jacob was a very, very rich man. He had a lot of livestock, a lot of cattle, and a lot of sheep. So he sends Joseph out to check on his brothers one day. Now remember, this animosity has been building between the brothers and Joseph. And when Joseph gets to the brothers, and, and they seen him afar off coming, and he said, here comes the dreamer. Here comes the, the dad's favorite. Here comes the, 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 the family brat so to speak. and So as he was approaching the brothers, they, they got together and, and they, 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 uh, they formed a, 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 a plan that when he got there, they was going to kill him. But, but I, I just want to illustrate this to you. Here is, if you can't imagine, this is the coat. This is the coat that Jacob had made Joseph. And, and I almost imagine when he went to see his brothers, he had this coat on. He was sporting it around flaunting it, saying, look what dad's made me. And he sent me out here. He says, you know, I, notice I'm not out here, but he sent me out here to check on you guys. He sent me out here to see what was going on. And so that raised the temperature level that much more. And so as he got there, the, the brothers devised a scheme to, uh, some of them wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him, but but the oldest one said, no, we can't kill him, we can't kill him, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to dig a pit. And we're going to throw him in that pit. And you know the story. I'm not going to go into all of the detail. But as they took and, and throwed him into the pit, they took his coat. And they took his coat and they, and they shredded it up. And they, and they killed a, a kid goat. And they dipped his coat in blood. And now the coat looks like this. The coat looks like this. And I imagine they did a number on it because, man, this thing's a tore up. I don't know which way is which what. Okay. But I imagine they got a lot of, of gratification out of tearing this coat up and dipping it in the blood, saying, we're going to show him. They put him in a pit. They put him in a pit to leave, and, and, and along comes a, a bunch of uh, gypsies, if you will, Mennonites, and, and they sell Joseph to the Mennonites. They sell him to the Mennonites, and, and so they got to come up with a story they got to come up with a story of when they go back home, what are they going to tell their dad? Well, how, how are we going to say that Joseph is not with us? And so when they get back home, uh, they take the coat and they go, and I can just about imagine Jacob either sitting on the porch or in the house waiting for the boys to get back home. And, and they said, Dad, do you recognize this coat? And he looks at it and he said, well, that... That's Joseph's coat. That's the coat I made him. Surely a, a wild animal, a lion or a leper or, or something like that has got a hold of Joseph and tore him to shreds and have possibly eaten him. Oh, and, the, and then the Bible says that he began to mourn. He began to mourn and he went into deep depression because the loss of his son. The loss of his son. And, and so time went on and and, and the, the, the boys went back to their families and they had done the grazing and done what the father had done. And they left their father there all by himself to, to grieve and to mourn the loss of Joseph. And uh, weeks went by. And the other children of, of Jacob hadn't heard anything out of their dad. And so finally, the oldest one, Reuben, goes and checks on his father. and says, Dad, I know that... Uh, you're mourning 
uh, Joseph and, and, and everything like that. But, Dad, you got to get out of the house. This, this thing is eating you up, and, and the depression and the grief, it's, it's going to kill you, Dad. It's going to tear you down. And he says, you know what, son, you're right. So Reuben says, come on over and come on over to the house and I'll have the wife fix you some lamb chops and we'll have a nice dinner, Dad. And you can interact with your grandkids and, and you can love on them. And, and so Jacob goes with Reuben and they go over to Reuben's house and he eats a nice dinner and, and he interacts with his grandchildren and, and, and and he says at the end of the dinner, you know what, Reuben, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you so much. This, this is exactly what I needed. I needed to get out of the house. I needed to get away from, from all of that. And, and, and seeing the grandkids, it's just been awesome. And, and said, I, I feel better. I, I, I feel like I'm turning the corner on this thing. Thank you so much. And so Reuben takes his, loads his dad back up in the wagon and drives him back home and and. And I can almost imagine now this, I'm telling this story for him, I can almost imagine as Jacob starts coming and the house starts coming in sight that maybe that old sinking feeling started happening to him again. And Reuben lets his dad out and Jacob goes into the house and when he walks into the house, what's the first thing he sees? The robe, the bloody robe. And what happens is all of those memory, all of that depression, all of that anxiety and all that loss begin to war, war, uh, wash back over Jacob. And so he went right back into that same old depression, that same old funk. And he, would, and he, got, the, he got the coat and he began to cling and hold it and said, Oh, Joseph, my son Joseph, Oh, Joseph, you could just, if you could just be here, you could just be here. This is all I've got left of you. I'll never let this go. And so he began to mourn. He began to weep. Reuben went on home, and another week or so went by, and none of the other kids heard anything out of him. And the next son, Simeon, said, I'm going to go over and check on Dad. It's been a while. So Simeon goes over and says, Dad, come on, get out of the house. I know, Reuben, what he did for you. Let me, let, let me go and bring you to my house. And, 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 Dad, I'll take you and I'll show you all your flock and all your sheep and all your cattle. And, and we'll take some of the grandkids with us, Dad. And you can look over all the acres that you have and all the goodness that, all the goodness that God has done for you and all the good things that God has bestowed upon you. Jacob says, Simeon, I think I'll go. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for coming. So he takes him and, and they go and I, I just imagine he's up on a tall hill and he's overlooking all the cattle and all the sheep and them grazing and, and all of that. And, and they begin to cook a, a, a picnic thing outside on the fire. And he says, Simeon, I, you just don't know how much I needed this. This is what the doctor ordered. This is exactly what I needed. I needed to get away from the house. I needed to get away from all that stuff that, that, that just tries to take me over. And, and, and Simeon, you're right. God has been good to me. God has blessed our family. Just look at all this. Look at all this. There's hardly anybody around here like this that's got all this goodness. God, God has truly, truly been good. He has blessed our family. Simeon says, yes, Daddy, he has. And he's still going to bless us, Dad. The goodness of the Lord is still on you. He said, you're right, son. Simeon loads his dad back up on the wagon, and he begins to take him home. As soon as he gets home, he goes back into the house again. And there's the same old bad memory, the same old bloody coat, the same old thing. And he begins to grip it again and said, oh, I know the Lord's been good to me. I know he's been gracious to me, and I know he's blessed me. I'm a very wealthy man, but my son, Joseph, if I only had Joseph here, I would give all this away to have my son back. And he began to mourn, and he began to go into deep depression. So, that's that scene. If you will, let's go to, I'll be getting back to this. If you go, let's go to scene number two. Scene, the second scene involves Peter. Just a few hours before Jesus was arrested, Jesus told Peter, said, Peter, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And here's the story behind the rooster. Jesus says, Simon, you're going to deny me. And Peter, in the scripture says, Peter says, 
I will never. Listen to me, Jesus. I will never. I will never, never deny you. Some of these other ones might, but not me. I will never. Be careful when you say, I never. There's a lot of us, almost every one of us in here has lived long enough to eat some words called, I never. I never. I've had my fill of I never. So then Jesus does something strange. He points to a rooster. Jesus told Peter, he says, before this rooster crows, this very night, you will deny me. And the rooster Now, we, that's funny, ain't it? It's funny to us. It is. I mean, when I, I just laughed, and I, I thought, man, this is the neatest thing. We worked hard to get this rooster. It's pretty lifelike. <laughs> but what if you were Peter? What if you had done exactly what Jesus said that you were going to do? The first time he denied him. The second time he cursed. The third time he, put a, he wished a curse up on himself. And when he did that, the rooster crowed. <coughs> and at that time, I just believe that Peter said, What have I done? What have I done? Why did I do that? Jesus even told me. Jesus himself even told me that I was going to do that. And if Jesus told me, you would think I would have enough sense not to do that. But I did it anyway. What? And, and, and I believe that when he heard that rooster crow, the, the guilt and the condemnation began to wash in over him and thinking, what a mess you have made of your life. You've walked with the Messiah. You've walked with Jesus. You've talked with him. You're in his inner circle. But yet you still did exactly what he prophesied or said that you was going to do. He was giving me a heads up and I still did it. And now every time that he, he begins to feel the remorse. But this is not the end of the rooster. There's a story behind the rooster. we got to understand that in third world countries, in many countries there. Everybody's got a rooster. Everybody's got a chicken. Everybody's got a land chicken. It ain't like we can run over here to Kroger's or Piggly Wiggly or something like that or, or Aldi's and, and buy a dozen eggs. Every, roosters were very common in the day of Christ. But just, but I believe that as after his denial that every time that Peter heard a rooster crow, He would remember the denial, the cursing, the cursing of himself. If we would be truthful, there's a lot of us has experienced the crow of the rooster. If we would be truthful this morning, we've all got a bloody coat of some type in our lives. A bad memory or a bad decision or something, a loss or whatever. And if we're not careful, it will be our default that we'll go back to it in times of leanness or times of insecurity because this is all I've got. This is all I've got. And I go back to it and I grab on it and I hug on it because now this is my identity. This is what has happened to me. This is, this is what people know me as, that I've lost my favorite son. And if that's not enough, we'll have the rooster begin to crow of all the disappointing things that we've done. And I'm telling you right now, I'm at the top of the heap with the disappointing things that I've done in my life. Whew. I'm telling you, this message is for somebody in this room and it's for somebody that's online watching. And I pray... 
I pray that you get this the way that God has given it to me. And so I, I just can imagine that Peter goes to his home and he's lamenting and he's battling the things and he just keeps hearing over and over and over in his ears how he denied Christ and how Christ said it, he would deny him. And after about a week or week and a half of that, Peter says, man, I've got, I, he begins to shake himself. He says, I've got to go, I've got to go do something different. I've got to get up out of this place. I've got to change my atmosphere. And he says, I know what I'll do. I think I'll go into town. Going into town. I'll, I'll go into town and intermingle with the crowd, and I'll get around some other people, and maybe I can get this off of my mind. And he goes into town, and he sees some of his friends, and he begins to interact with some of the other people. And all of a sudden, he's not thinking about the rooster. He's not thinking about the denials. And he's actually starting to begin to enjoy himself. You know, when you come to church and the Lord touches you and the Lord blesses you, and the Lord does something good for you, and, and, and there's that ray of hope that comes in your life, and, or somebody comes along and does something with you or, or for you, and you forget about the past, and you know how good that feels, and then all of a sudden you hear the rooster crow. <coughs> and I can almost imagine that as Peter walked around town, all of a sudden he heard the flapping of some wings. And this time he looks around and he sees the rooster, but the rooster don't crow. The rooster's chasing him. The rooster's haunting him and taunting him. And that's the way Satan does with us with the things of our past. He wants to, to limit us and lock us up and, and to get us in deep mourning and deep, deep regret and, and thinking that it's over and we can never do anymore and we can never be any better. He says, I know what I'm going to do. He says, I'm going to go to my family's house and I'm going to have dinner with my family. Maybe that's what I need. And so he goes to his family's house just outside of the town. He goes in and he has dinner. And he comes out. He says, man, I'm feeling better. Man, I'm feeling good. This is exactly what I need. And just as he's had a great time, just as he's interacted with his family, just as he's got the, the past off his mind, he walks outside and he sees the rooster and he hears the rooster crow. And all of a sudden, all the likeness, all the, the good feeling that he had is diminished and gone away. And all the old feelings and all the denials and all the other things that Peter had probably done because we know Peter was a rambunctious guy. He, you know, he cuts guys' ears off and it's untelling. Probably the Bible's not playing on everything that Peter had done in his life. But all of those things begin to wash back over him. And the rooster crowed at him. All of us had made mistakes. And this message is for, for somebody that's made a mistake. And I think we all qualify. The enemy, Satan, is always crowing in our ear. Even after we're born again. Even after we know we've been washed in the blood of Jesus. After, even after we know we've been forgiven and our sin is as far as the east is from the west. That old rooster begins to crow in our ear. Of everything about our past. Every shortcoming that we've had. Everything that we were supposed to do and didn't do. And, and how we acted uh, out of character. Satan wants you to... Always be grieving of a, an episode or an incident or a loss in your life. And a loss could be anything. It could be a spouse. It could be a child. It could be a home. It could be a marriage. It could be anything. And he always wants you to go back to this bloody robe. And I dare say that all of us have some type of bloody robe in our background. Something that we could always go back to and, and say, Oh, that's, that was an ugly era. That was an ugly time in my life. I wished I, could, I wished I could just get away from that. But something inevitably happens in our lives, and it brings us right back to this old bloody robe. The old thing, the old loss, or, or whatever we've had in our lives, and, and we cling to it. When in all actuality, we have been delivered from it. It's no longer a part of our past. It's no longer who we are. We're the redeemed of the Lord. And we need to say so in Jesus' name. 
And Satan always wants the crowing of condemnation and guilt, bad judgment, bad actions in our lives. He always wants that crowing in our ear. See, there's always going to be a sound. There's always, we're always going to be subject to a sound. And we need to choose this day, am I going to be subject to the crowing of the rooster? Or am I going to hear the sound of the Holy Spirit? Am I going to hear the voice and the sound of God Almighty? we got to choose this day who we're going to listen to. About that time, there's a knock on Peter's door. Somebody says, Peter, you got to get to the tomb. Get to the tomb. Yeah, they're saying that Jesus has risen from the dead. You're kidding me. He said he was, but he actually, yeah, P Peter, he actually did. Like, come on, go, go check. So Peter rushes to the tomb, and he looks into the tomb, and he actually sees an empty tomb. And about the time he stands up, and, he, and he's about to rejoice and, and be happy over the, over the risen Savior like Jesus said he was, he turns around, and there's a rooster. The rooster had chased him from his house and messing with him and crowing in his ear. Chased him all the way to the tomb. And, and now the rooster has absolutely took the life and the joy out of the, of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just about the time you get a breakthrough. Just about the time that God does something awesome for you. Just about the time you feel like you've been uh, uh, undone from a burden, if you will, so to speak. That old rooster will begin to crow. <coughs> we can't live life in the rearview mirror. We got to always be forward looking. After that scene, one of the disciples says, Hey, let's get to the upper room. Let's go to the upper room. And we pick that up in Acts chapter 2. Here's the rest of the story. They were gathered in the upper room, the 120 of them. And the Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing or roaring wind. See, there will always be a sound. There will be the sound of your past, of the rooster crowing in your ear, telling you that you're a failure and you're nothing and you'll never change. You've had start after start. Issue after issue, help after help. He, and he will tell you that and he will crow in your ear. I had the rooster crow in my ear yesterday. Because I know what God wants to do with this church. I know where he wants to take this church. I know what we got to do as far as people-wise and, and, and administration-wise to do this. So as I was talking to someone about that, the rooster was crowing in my ear saying, dumb choice. You'll never do it. You'll never do it. And every time that we have taken a step of faith in this church, there's been a rooster to crow saying, you'll never do it. You'll never do it. And it will cause us, if we're not careful, to drive back to a time when somebody left us, somebody hurt us. Something didn't go right. Something didn't work out. And I'll go back to that and almost out of that bloody coat syndrome, so to speak, I'll almost justify why I shouldn't do what the Lord is calling us to do because of the rooster is crowing in my ear. On that day, there came a sound from heaven that filled the room and it filled Simon Peter. That sound was the power of the Holy Spirit coming down to fill the 120 in the upper room. That sound, that Holy Spirit, is greater than any sound that rings in your ears today. He is greater than any loss or any mess that you have made of your life. He's greater than that. Yeah. On that day, the Bible says, on that day after they were filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Peter was about to preach his first sermon. He stepped out on the, on the steps of of the upper room after they were filled and he's about to preach his first sermon and, and we know that 3,000 people and, and, and a sermon about a minute long over 3,000 people give their life to Jesus but I can almost in my mind's eye as Peter stepped out to the street and he began before he began to preach he looked up and in the window of the upper room 
was a rooster. Was a rooster. At that point, he had a choice. Do I listen to the rooster or do I listen to the power of the Holy Spirit? And on that day, thank God, he stepped out and preached a minute-long message and over 3,000 people gave their life to Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. There was something about that time. There comes a point in time in our lives that we grow and we mature in Christ that the bloody coat will just become a, a memory. And we need to learn to lose the details of our past and our bad memories. There'll come a time that the rooster will try to crow and bring up something ugly and negative, a failure or a loss. And we got to just block that out. And we got to be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. That time, this time is different than all the other times. Why? Because Peter decided to go. And he had the power of the Holy Spirit in him. And he was going to do what Christ wanted him to do. This time. This time was different than the last time because the greater one now lived in Peter. The greater one was residing in him so that when the rooster, the rooster wanted to crow or the bloody coat wanted to resurface and put some kind of a, a, a memory in your mind, it, was, it wouldn't affect them the way it usually did. This time was different. It was different. As long as Satan can keep us going back to the old bloody coat, and reliving the past, he's got you right where he wants you. We've all got the potential and we've all got the possibility of going back to something that has hurt us and caused great distress in our lives. That's because we're human. It's our damnic nature. But through the word of God and through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we can put that thing away permanently in our lives. The rooster's always going to crow. He's always going to crow. That's it. That, let him crow. Let him crow. He's always going to crow. He's always going to tell you why you're not qualified. Why you don't preach good enough. Why you can't do this. Why well, You're not a good enough husband. You're not a good enough father. Well, your son ain't serving the Lord. He's always going to crow in your ear and tell you the things that you're not doing. But there comes a point in time. That the sound from heaven came in like a mighty rushing wind becomes louder and more dominant in your life than any rooster crow that could ever happen in your life. There comes that point in time. In chapter 45, verse 26, it says that when Jacob's sons told Jacob that Joseph was alive because they had been to Egypt, and they knew that he was the governor of Egypt. He had the keys to all the corn. He was in control of who got what. They went back and, and they told their dad. And it said Jacob's heart stood still because he did not believe them. He still was believing a lie. Here's the thing. If you're not rooted and grounded in the word and who you are in Christ and what he has done in your life, there's a tendency to always go back and believe the lie. This was a lie. This is the truth. It says, because he did not believe them, he was believing the lie. That was the lie. This is the truth. Though your sins may be as scarlet, I will wash you white as snow. Amen. As dirty and ugly as it could have been, and this was a lie. And let's say it was the truth. This is the truth. This is reality. I don't care how many bloody coats that you have in your closet, how many things that you have done, how much the rooster crows in your ear. This is the truth. Jesus came, and he gave his, and he gave his life so that we could walk in his redeeming power, in his uh, authority and his power I got to thinking about this church and the progression that we've had every step of the way from over there at the old place to here there's been the rooster there's been the rooster 
that little group of people can't buy this land. And the rooster would go. <laughs> okay, guys, you got to watch me. you got to work with me here. <laughs> and then we bought the land and we got it paid for. And they said, you'll never be able to build that church. You'll never get a loan. And the rooster would crow. And then we got over here and we put the foundation in and it set for a couple, two, three years because we didn't have any more money. And every time we drove by this place, the rooster would crow. <coughs> and then we got a banker to believe in us that understood faith giving, understood giving units, understood church finance. And they took a chance on us and they loaned us the money. And now we sit here today. When we first moved in here, we, we wasn't allowed to have access to the upper level because it was unfinished. And, the, and, we, and we had gravel in the parking lot. We didn't even have light poles in the parking lot. And the rooster would crow. <coughs> but then we begin to grow. People begin to understand the faithfulness of God and faith giving. And then we finished the upstairs, and we bought chairs, and we bought carpet, and, we, and, and, and God calls favor to get upon our lives so much that the, the Baker boys, everybody knows Baker Concrete? The Baker, one of the Baker boys, and here's a, here, here's a neat thing. Back when my, my dad moved up here from Kentucky, he, he moved out in Riley, and he went to the little church out in Riley, and one of his Sunday school teachers was old man Mr. Baker who was uh, the daddy of the Baker boys that owned Baker Concrete. And he went to him and said, hey, the church that I'm going to, they need some concrete work done. And so they began. And they came in and he poured the concrete and we got enough money to blacktop. Amen. Every step, every step, there's been the rooster crow. But I'm telling you right now, there's a sound. There's a sound that I hear from heaven. And it's like a, like a rushing mighty wind. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here this morning to set everyone free. So the crux of my message is don't believe the lie. Get rid of the bloody coat syndrome. Crow if you want to, rooster. Crow if you want to, but this time it's different. I hear the sound of the Holy Spirit.